How's it going folks? You're very welcome to today's uh, Leaving Cert Geography lesson. We're going to focus in particular on the Geoecology section uh, and today we're going to cover the desert biome. Okay, so uh, to answer this question folks, um, typical question uh, in the biome section, examine the characteristics of one biome that you study with reference to any tree of the following headings. Okay, so we need to look at um, how plants and animals have adapted to the soil and to the climate okay uh, so if we look down towards the bottom of the slide guys what we need to do first of all name the biome we are discussing very simple describe its main characteristics uh, in terms of its soils its flora and its fauna okay so flora meaning animals fauna meaning plants and in particular guys we're going to focus in on how animals and plants have adapted to the harsh desert climate and the desert soils okay um, and then we need to describe how these characteristics have adapted to the harsh desert climate okay so uh, if we dive right into it folks uh, we're going to start off with talking about animals how have certain animals adapted to live in the harsh desert climate okay so uh, your intro guys to this kind of question uh, so it would be something along the lines of you know in this answer we will discuss the way plants and animals have adapted to the soils and climatic conditions in the hot desert okay very straightforward okay um so animals in the hot desert uh, eat whatever and whenever they can find it so animals in the hot desert you know there's not a whole abundance of plants for them to eat so they have to eat whatever they can and whenever they can find it so animals can number one they can eat almost anything and number two they can go a long time without eating as well okay um smaller animals are more common as well why are small animals more common because they can regulate their body temperature easily okay um you know like for example you think if you've got a small room or on a large room which room is it going to be easier to control the temperature in the smaller room okay uh, and why wh why do animals need to be able to regulate and control their temperature well um the desert as we know is a high gerinal temperature range okay what does this mean there's a huge difference between the temperature at night time and the temperature during the day okay there could be like a 40 degree difference there you know so as a result animals have to be able to change and adapt their body temperature to survive okay this harsh this harsh difference in temperature okay uh, common animals in the desert include the coyote the jackrabbit the desert toad bottom left there and the kangaroo rat okay so um you know most animals in the desert are quite they're quite familiar to us uh, in some way but they've they've changed or adapted okay to survive in the hot desert climate okay so um animals have long limbs are pale colored to help them keep cool okay so they're pale color that's a big one guys okay it's a bit like you know if you walked outside on a hot day and you had a black jumper on okay you would nearly roast to death okay why are they pale in color because uh the pale colors will naturally reflect away the heat and the sunlight okay so that helps them to keep cool um jackrabbits for example have huge ears fed by a network of blood vessels to help cool their blood so if you look at a jackrabbit there guys you can see um it's got big ears and what happens there guys is those big ears basically catch the wind and the breeze as they go through them and the wind and the breeze will flow through their ears and it'll cool the blood that runs through the veins in their ears and the blood vessels in their ears okay it's the very same way the radiator on a car works when you drive a car uh, the radiator naturally kind of sucks in air and this air will cool the coolant for the engine okay very same sort of principle with a jackrabbit okay um, kangaroo rats okay so we see the kangaroo rat there there's a guy over to in the middle between the between the um, desert fox and the jackrabbit uh, can absorb water from dry seeds okay so like a dry seed you find in the desert it might have like one percent or 0.5 percent moisture content okay and a kangaroo rat has the ability to absorb that water okay if, if, a, if i ate that i wouldn't be able to absorb the water but a kangaroo cat uh, sorry kangaroo rats can okay um desert animals are also nocturnal to avoid the harsh daytime heat what does nocturnal mean it means they only come out at night time okay so during the day they live in burrows okay and they only come out at night time when it's cooler for example the bottom left there you've got a desert fox that's a nocturnal animal okay a uh, desert fox can also conserve water by not sweating okay so desert fox wouldn't have the same kind of sweat pores as a human would okay so they can conserve a lot of water by not sweating you know if they are out in the heat okay um very few large animals live in the desert as they can't cope with the heat and lack of water okay so it's the same kind of idea we are saying guys about you know would it be it's you know it'd be easier to heat up a regular regular the temperature in a smaller room compared to a big room okay so um very few large animals like the bigger you are the kind of heavier you are you know the more work it takes for you to move around and you know you're gonna 
you're gonna it's gonna be hotter as a result for you okay so there's because of this there's less large animals in the desert the only real large animal in the desert is a desert camel okay and obviously that's got special adaptations for example it can store water and things like that to help it survive okay so mainly mainly small animals your jackrabbit your kangaroo wrasse and your your desert fox that kind of live in the desert all right um so Plants. So plants also can help animals survive in a desert. Okay, so here we have a cactus or some cacti. The cacti is a plural for a cactus. Okay, and beneath plants, guys, uh, what do plants do? Plants are going to lose bits of you know leaves and vegetation. Okay, so what, what does this provide? So this provides an abundant of or dead organic matter. Okay, underneath them, and this dead organic matter is perfect for small, tiny little animals to feed on. Okay, so underneath desert plants such as the cactus, there's what's called a fertile island. Okay, and what the fertile island does is it, it uh, encourages high densities of small animals to live in the soil around that plant. Okay, now why is underneath a plant fertile? It's fertile because that plant's gonna, you know, bits of that plant are gonna fall off over time, leaves, whatever, spikes, whatever they may be, and animals can then feed on these. Okay. Uh, and these animals can include like insects as well. So small spiders and microscopic worms live in the soil close to plant roots. Okay, and that's just plant adaptation there in itself. So them small microscopic insects and things, you know, they adapt to their surroundings by living under and in and around the area of a plant. Why? Because the organic materials provided by dead plant litter will provide them with a food source. Okay. Um, so folks, we're now going to move on to how plants adapt to the desert climate. Okay. Just like animals, guys, plants have to change and adapt to survive the harsh desert conditions. Okay. Uh, first adaptation is desert plants can store water in the leaves, stem and roots. Okay. To survive dry conditions. So literally every part of a desert plant can hold water. Okay. Again, this is so it can, you know, hold as much water as possible. Okay. Th think of the plants as having a massive water tank. So they can hold as much water as possible. Okay, um, and these plants are called succulents. So the name for most desert plants is a succulent. An example of a succulent is a cactus. Okay, so a cactus can store water in its spikes. It can store water in its stem and its roots. And uh, you know, and again, why is this? This is because so they can store as much water as possible. Okay, so they can last a long time without rain. Okay. Uh, other adaptations. So desert plants have thick, waxy leaves and dense hairs, which prevents moisture loss. Okay, so look at the picture there in the top left, guys. That's a, a, a desert plant. And you can see there that the leaf has been snapped in half. And you can you see in relation to the, the person's finger how thick that leaf is. Okay, and again, the thickness... For, of that leaf is be is so it'll prevent that leaf from losing moisture okay again so thick waxy leaves okay so that that'd be really thick and strong again prevents water loss okay um other plants have sharp thorny leaves that prevent birds insects and animals from biting into the plant to get water what's our famous sharp thorny plant that everyone associates with the desert it's a cactus okay and again guys those spikes uh, sharp thorns or spikes whatever you want to call them around a cactus again those are for defense those are a defense mechanism to stop birds and animals and insects going near it okay if a bird's flying over and he sees a cactus he's going to think i'm not going near that because i'm going to get stung okay again uh, defense mechanisms to prevent themselves but prevent them losing water to prevent animals taking their water okay uh, bottom left is an interesting picture guys those little Co that little coating of hairs on that uh, leaf there are called trichomes, okay? And what do trichomes do? Trichomes, they slow the air movement over the plant, okay? So the really high, uh, sorry, really hot, dry desert air, when it moves very fast, okay, it can lead to evaporation. And when, you know, plants don't want evaporation because it means they lose valuable water, okay? So trichomes, trichomes, what they do is, um, that's the trichomes, by trichomes, I mean the dense coating of hairs, they slow down uh, air movement above the plant okay in and around the plant they slow the air movement and they prevent evaporation so they pr they prevent the evaporation and loss of valuable uh, water for that plant okay um now, how else have plants adapted to the desert climate? Okay, well, we know that these plants are called succulents, okay? And succulents can, one thing they can do is they can expand when water is available. So look at a picture in the top left there, guys. That's a barrel cactus, okay? And it's a, you know, it's the shape of kind of a barrel or basically, you know? And when it does rain, that barrel cactus can actually grow in size, okay? By growing in size, the cactus increases its surface area so it can catch more water, okay? Um, a barrel cactus also has thick, 
deep grooves which direct water to the roots and enable the plant to fill up with water during rainfall. So if you look at a barrel cactus, guys, okay, it's obviously kind of a roundy kind of barrel shape. Notice the way it's got grooves. Those grooves act as like mini water channels, okay? So when it does rain, the water will flow down those grooves and it gets directed right down into the roots, okay? They're basically little mini water water slides, if you want to call them that, okay? And um again it just it means that in the off chance it does rain plants like the barrel cactus can take full advantage by number one expanding and by number two uh, their channels directing water to the roots okay uh, another interesting adaptation a lot of desert plants have is they can complete their life cycle in just a few weeks. Okay, so um, for example, the desert poppy and desert dandelion. So there's your bottom left there, guys, are your desert dandelions. Okay, and th those plants there on the bottom left will only last for about a month. Okay, and why is this? Well, these 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 are special seeds, and these seeds can lie in a dormant state. A dormant state means a sleeping state. Okay, so they can lie in a sleeping state for years in the desert. Okay, and it, it might rain like one, you know once in five years in a desert but when it does rain these these seeds will quickly use that opportunity to germinate into a plant okay um they'll flower so they'll flower like the picture you have there they'll produce new seeds okay so they'll produce new seeds and those new seeds might be sitting on the ground for years and then they'll die so the plant, the plant there bottom left will die in three to four weeks okay so it can complete its life cycle in a very very short space of time uh, it'll leave behind new seeds and again these seeds don't have to wait for more rain which could be years down the line okay so that's your that's your desert down the line really really interesting you know you can you can almost take a time lapse video of its of its uh of its life cycle okay so three to four weeks bit of rain causes the seeds to germinate into flowers the flowers produce new seeds and then the flowers die off okay um now we've already we've spoken about how plants have adapted to the desert climate how have plants adapted to the harsh desert soil well first of all um desert soils are called aridisols okay and desert soils as you'd imagine have a really low moisture content basically a really low water content okay and they also contain impermeable chalk deposits so what's impermeable mean impermeable means that water cannot pass through it and if water cannot pass through levels of soil that can be a big big problem okay um and in particular, guys, those uh, impermeable uh, layers, they're, they're chalk deposits and they're called calish and they're held in the B horizon. So that would be the third layer of soil. You've got your O horizon on top, you've got your A horizon underneath that, and then you've got your B horizon. Okay, and, and that's a big, big problem that that's impermeable. Okay, and because it's impermeable, plants have had to adapt um, adapt themselves to be able to reach water. Okay, um, for example, perennial plants can live for several years, but must adapt to the changeable water content of the aridosol. Okay, so guys, if you look at the bottom left there, the picture, that is a perennial plant. And notice the, the simple way it's adapted to the, the really dry, uh, low moisture aridosol soils. It's got really, it's got a network of really long tap roots. Okay, um, and what do these long tap roots do? It means they can, they can access water that's really Deep, uh, deep down in the water table okay so those plants can make their way past the impermeable or basically punch a hole through the impermeable chalk deposit and get right down uh, into the low horizons to find that water content okay and uh, in particular the mesquit bush has these the mesquit bush and the creosote bush they have these long tap roots again to reach really deep into the soil into the low water table okay um, how else the plants adapted to the soil um, for example while some plants, as you just said, the, the, the creosote bush have really, really deep roots, other plants have really shallow roots, but the shallow roots cover a wide surface area. Okay, so uh, for example, a cactus or a cacti for plural. So other desert plants such as a cacti have shallow fibrous roots, which spread it over large areas to capture as much water as possible when it does rain. So if you look at a picture here in the top left, guys, notice the, the cactus roots aren't deep but they are really they're shallow, but they're very spread out. And this means that it's got a large kind of uh, wide radius area. So when it does rain, it can collect water in a wide um, radius. It's a bit like having a really, like a big, putting a big swimming pool out in your garden, okay? And when it rains, that pool can get, it's gonna gather a lot more water than say putting a cup, just a, you know, a cup or a teacup out in your garden, okay? Um, as a result, um, they can survive lengthy periods, okay? So uh, as, as well as, you know, wh wh when it doesn't rain, as we know, what, what do you know about cactuses or cacti? They can store water in their roots, their spikes, and their stems. So they can also survive lengthy periods without water when it's unavailable, okay? 
Um, another uh, adoption of a cresswood bush, okay, is a cresswood bush in, in a desert is related to its soil type. So there we've got our cresswood bushes in the bottom left there, okay. And um, the cresswood bush is found in desert soils that allow deep infiltration of water. It is adapted by evolving a deep root system, okay, um, to extract water from deep underground. So uh, very similar, if we go back here to this slide, guys, this plant here, again, same kind of job. It's got deep, long tap roots to access deep into the water table underground. But the cresswood bush not only has deep roots, it also has what um, shallow roots that cover a large radius, okay? A large radius, and what does this mean? This means it can take advantage of soil moisture um, at, at a more shallow level and also at a wider level. Again, it's the idea, guys, of if you put a cup or a, a swimming pool out in your garden, what's gonna collect more water when it rains? The cup or, or the swimming pool, okay? So that's your um, the Crestwood bush there, okay? Uh, folks, that's all for our desert biome here today. If you have any questions at all, please don't be afraid to drop me a message.